Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. Have you ever thought that what we can learn from the construction of the tallest building in the world, which is Burj Khalifa? This is Burj Khalifa, constructed in just six years, between January 2004 and January 2010. Standing tall at 828 meters, it crushed Tapi's 101 record by a staggering 319 meters. This wasn't just a progress, this was a huge leap of 62%. All the tallest building that existed before Burj Khalifa, they were taller than the previous record holder between 5 and 19%. The 162 story skyscraper contains offices, retail space, residential units, and an Armani hotel. So how did they pull this off? What were the key challenges? What are the implications for Dubai, UAE, and other governments around the world? What are the key takeaways for business students, entrepreneurs, and business organizations? Stick around as I uncover this ambitious dream, its realization, key challenges, genius business move, jaw-dropping engineering design, and various fate-changing lessons for all of us. Let's start with the ambitious dreams that set the foundation for this huge project. Back in the 50s and 60s, it was a small port, fishing, pearl diving, and a few boats bobbing along the creek. Although in 1996, oil was discovered and it provided some support to the economy of the country, however, Dubai's leadership clearly knew that this oil wealth is going to be finite. Indeed, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum was dreaming of transforming Dubai from a small port and oil-dependent village into a global hub for business, tourism and luxury. What are you trying to do here? What do you want this place to be? I want it to be number one. Not in the region, but in the world. What do you mean, number one in the world? In everything. High education, health, uh, housing. Just making my people the highest way of living. However, a big question was that who would undertake this uphill task? This is where Muhammad al Abar and Imar Properties came in. Muhammad al Abar took this challenge to make Dubai's vision a reality. In fact, he was creating something that would shock the world and attract millions of investors and people to Dubai from around the world. However, this wasn't a smooth ride at all. He faced lots of issues. Let's discuss those issues one by one. Let's discuss financial issues first. When Imar started this project in 2004, there were some serious doubts from the global community and from the investors all around the world. They were saying that Imar was trying to sell skyscrapers that existed only on papers. After all, who would invest in a building that was supposed to be 62% taller than anything else in the world. Investors had some serious risks. What if the project failed? What if Dubai's economy could not support this massive development? However, Muhammad al Abar overcame these challenges through his strong leadership, his vision, his obsession for this incredible dream, as well as through government support and collaborations. Here is how he did it. First, let's talk about his visionary leadership and credibility in the real estate market of the UAE. Muhammad al Abar has already developed projects like Dubai Marina. These projects build his reputation and a track record in Dubai's real estate market, lending credibility to the Burj Khalifa project. Second important factor that helped Muhammad al Abar address these challenges was government support. Dubai government not only built infrastructure, but also it built investors' confidence. Third important factor that helped Muhammad al Abar counter these challenges was the inclusion of some well reputed companies in the project. Samsung Trading and Construction is one of the prime examples. This is a company that was involved in the construction of Petronas Towers, then the world's tallest twin towers. Their reputation for delivering complex projects gave the investor confidence and it helped Amar to pool resources. Imar's financial strategy also played a key role in the successful completion of this project. This strategy was based on three key pillars. These included phase financing, pre-sale strategy, and syndicated loans. Phase financing. Instead of securing all the loans upfront, Imar used phase financing scheme, where initial investment was used to kickstart the project. Pre-sale strategy. Pre-sales of residential units and commercial apartments helped them to generate funds. In fact, Imar was selling them on installments, where investors were supposed to deposit 10 to 20% upfront and remaining in installments. Syndicated loan. A syndicated loan is a large amount of loan provided by a group of lenders to a single borrower. This separate risk across multiple lenders and allows for massive funding that no single lender could provide alone. Fixed price contract was a vital part of Imar's financial strategy. Imar wanted a contractor that could commit to a fixed price contract, which is uncommon for such huge projects. Unlike cost plus contracts, where any kind of cost overruns are afforded by the client, 
Here, it was Samsung construction and trading that would afford all the cost overruns. Marketing Dubai as a global business hub also played an important role in the success of this project. Imar positioned Burj Khalifa as a symbol of Dubai's rise, attracting global attention. The tower was marketed not just as a building, rather as a tourist attraction, luxury destination, and engineering marvel. This contributed to the success of this project. As I mentioned in my previous video, that in the Great Recession of 2008, prices in Dubai fell by 50%. Dubai was in deep trouble. Abu Dhabi had to intervene and bail them out. However, this reassured investors and banks that this project would not fail. So financial challenges were not the only challenges actually. If you look at the structure of this building, in fact, there were many challenges related to this structure. Let's discuss a few of them. First, at 828 meters, the wind pressure is too intense. To fight this, engineers used a Y-shaped design with a hexagonal concrete core and added buttresses that acted like arms stabilizing the tower. A clever spiral shape was also used to confuse the wind and stop dangerous vibrations known as vortex shedding. Then came the problem of bending. Tall buildings sway and concrete can't resist tensile stress. So they added steel bars inside the core and connected cross walls to the buttresses, forming a strong I-beam structure to resist tensile stress. Pumping the concrete at that height and in Dubai's heat was a real challenge. To address this challenge, world's largest concrete pouring pumps were made and they also used special ice-cold concrete and that was only poured at night. If you think that the challenges are over, you are mistaken. What about the ground? Dubai's soil is weak and salty. Instead of digging for rock, they laid a massive rock foundation supported by 194 deep concrete piles. These don't push against rock, rather they grip the soil using friction. Importantly, to keep the building light near the top, the top 25% of Burj Khalifa is made of steel, no concrete at all, which flexes better during strong winds. So my friends, this is the story of Burj Khalifa, a project that turned a dream into the tallest building ever and a record that is still unbroken. Every part of Burj Khalifa, from its base to aspire, was designed to solve a problem. It is the symbol of creativity, innovation, resilience, and great leadership. This is not just the tallest building, rather, this is one of the smartest structures ever built. What governments, business organizations, leaders, entrepreneurs, and business students can learn from this leadership miracle and engineering marvel, wait for and watch my next video. Thank you so much. One night into five.